All right. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Prescott Herzog. My pronouns are he, him, his. Um, and I have been involved in HSDA for, um, I believe this is three years. This is my third summit. Um, I served as the 2018 to 2019 political director um, and the 2019 to 2020 programs director. Um, and I'm really excited to talk to you guys all today about connecting with your state parties. Um, so I just thought um, in order to give more context to the situation that we first kind of talk about um, the Democratic Party leadership and um, kind of the, the top to the bottom of uh, how the Democratic Party functions. Um, so at the very top of the organization, um, it's the Democratic National Committee Chair, which is currently Tom Perez, and, and the rest of the DNC officer positions, which includes uh, Congresswoman Grace Mang and a couple of other um, labor leaders. They're elected every four years, um, and they kind of report to the Democratic National Committee, which includes people like Kate. Um, it's about 450 members um, and on also 75 at-large seats that are appointed by the chair um, and those can be um, labor uh, and then more specifically for this 450 those are chosen by um, the the states in one way or another um, and that results in the state chairs and the other officer positions um, it's the dnc is very um gender-based when it comes to the seats. Uh, if there's a seat given to one male, um, it's going to be given to a woman, um, the other seat, um, so that way the DNC is balanced. And so state chairs are automatically um, a DNC member. And then um, there's at-large DNC seats as well as um, the vice chair of the opposite sex, much like in HSDA. Um, those State chairs and officer positions are chosen by state democratic committees, um, which are one of the biggest um, grassroots organizations inside of the state. In New Hampshire, um, there's 200 to 300 members from towns all over the, the state um, and they come together um, and that's picked by the um, county and city chairs and the democratic committees and the county and city democratic committees are the base of the organization where you can just go to a meeting uh, at your local level and get involved. Now, why should you care about working with your state party? Uh, at the end of the day, it's all about access and opportunity, um, especially when it comes to connections with legislatures and campaigns. Um, the state party is the main legislative driver in a lot of states. Uh, and primaries are also usually run by the state party or in conjunction with the secretary of state from a state. So they have the context um, and the connections in order to make HSDA a more of a, a mainstream organization. Uh, they also host tons of different events um, where it's just really easy to help get students more involved. Um, they also are a main fundraising wing of the Democratic Party, uh, where they're investing in uh, local and state races inside of the respective states, uh, and also sometimes are willing to give money to grassroots organizations like high school Democrats. Um, the photos here, um, the photo on the, the left with Vice President Biden was taken um, at a New Hampshire Young Democrats fundraiser. Um, the photo in the middle was taken uh, in 2018 at a New Hampshire Democratic Party fundraiser. Uh, and then the one on the far right is by, from a, a college Democrats fundraiser. And all of those are ways, <laughs> um, or ways of fundraising that um, connect with HSDA. And so the most important thing is finding a, a contact. And there's really three main ways that you can kind of find a contact within your state party. Um, the first one is the state young Democrats and, and the college Democrats organizations, depending on the state, um, young Dems or college Dems can already hold uh, major sway or influence instead of the state party uh, because of the grassroots work that they do. Uh, here in New Hampshire, um, the young Democrats have about 40 elected officials uh, in office right now and uh, consistently fundraise. Uh, and that's the case in a lot of other states too. So when 
<laughs> they're making decisions based on youth organizing, those are the ones that they're going to, uh, the state party is going to lean to and making sure that you're playing nice and getting involved with them uh, and making sure that high school Democrats it, uh, voices raised is really important. Um, the next position or contact that you can try and find is a state party's political director. Uh, the political director's job is to fulfill the caucus needs uh, and high school Democrats is classified as a caucus uh, in many state parties. Um, so it's really important that they're the ones who have all the connections with the campaigns and are constantly doing outreach with um, intersectional organiz organizations within the state party um, and also just campaigns and candidates across the state. Um, so that's also a great resource in order to try and connect with. Um, the third option is working with like local democratic committees. Um, getting students to show up at meetings uh, can really make a difference in, in changing opinions uh, because uh, a lot of the times they are really focused on voter outreach and, and voter engagement. And because we are a high school Democrats organization where we are within the schools, uh, we have a unique advantage of being able to sign up um, 18 year olds who are just about to register to vote, uh, where uh, otherwise they wouldn't be able to enter the high school. So working with local Democratic committees and kind of showing that um, you wanna take voter registration and, and getting involved politically at a young age seriously can be very impressive uh, and influencing. Uh, and also many local committees have consistent contact with the state party, especially if your district is, is inside of a competitive race. Um, in 2018, uh, my town was within one of the battleground state Senate districts. And so there was a lot of money uh, and time being flown, uh, put in into the state party district. Um, so uh, working with what you have inside of uh, your location is really important too. And if none of those work, um, always reach out to HSDA's National Executive Board. Um, the National Executive Board uh, has credibility as uh, being a part of the DNC, and if they are refusing to take you seriously, um, we, um, as the national organization, are, are more than happy to step in and get you the contacts uh, and information that you guys need. Um, the next thing is when you are reaching out uh, to be prepared. Um, when you are reaching out, you need to make sure that you have a purpose. Um, are you asking for finances in order to host uh, a phone bank and pizza party? Are you looking for an opportunity to volunteer? Are you looking for a connection with um, a state Senate candidate or a congressional representative? Or are you looking for representation of some sort on the state committee? Um, another important uh, factor to look at is um, if they have a precedent of collaborating with youth organizations like HSDA, um, a lot of the times you'll see um, ups and downs when it comes to HSDA involvement. Uh, one of the most notable is South Carolina, um, where around 2016, they were very highly influential inside of the party. In 2018, um, the organization um, kind of uh, died a little bit um, and then now you um, the chapter itself is rebounding and, and making influence and so uh, people who remember the organization and the work that it did in 2016 um, is super important when it comes to, to making your case um, and also to what can your local and state chapter do to support the state party and its candidates um, at the end of the day, a lot of politics is transactions on what, what I can do for you, for you to help me out. And so it's super important that um, you, you're bringing something to the table when you're talking uh, and, and wanting to get something from the state party. Um, another thing that is really important is that to know that not every single person is going to be receptive and it takes a really long time to change hearts and minds. Um, on the national level of the organization, it took three years in order for us to get um, the DNC seats. And um, there's tons of other state chapters who have had issues when it comes to <laughs> trying to connect and engage. You just got to make sure that you're always um, getting involved and not getting down when one contact doesn't work out. And then once you've made the connection and working, now what do you do? Um, the big thing is to, to get to work. 
Um, a lot of the times um, they're quote unquote taking chances on using high school Democrats uh, and putting efforts into the high school Democrats organization. So it's really important that you have end results uh, in some meeting. Uh, it's also really important to keep in contact and touch the entire time. Um, if there's a development in a project that you're working on, uh, whether it be like a setback or gain, uh, you should let the contact know. Uh, and then also after an event that you've done, it's a really important to send photos and videos uh, to show um, the person that helped you out um, what exactly they did to help make it happen. It's also really important to stay up to date on party politics and events. Um, state parties and HSDA chapters have to stay neutral inside of primaries. Um, and so if you're doing an event with one specific candidate, uh, you can get the contact or worked with the state party to get the connection with the other um, candidate from the party. Um, state parties also host fundraisers and events that can be critical to chapter credibility if you're working. Um, so it's really important that um, you're working with the primary candidate or the state party or young Democrats, uh, and that way they can uh, help out and potentially uh, cover any costs. And so that's kind of the <laughs> the base of um, going through the process of connections and working. Uh, today with me, I have um, Asma Akbar, um, who's the New Hampshire High School Democrats chair um, over the wonderful First in the Nation primary, and also Lena Rye, who's the Maryland High School Democrats chair. Um, both of them have had very different experiences when it comes to working with state parties and young Democrats. Um, and it's an honor to have you guys here. And so could you guys just give a short introduction on, um, on, on yourself? <laughs> um, I can start. Hi, guys. I'm Lena. And as Prescott said, um, I'm currently Marilyn Chair. And I'm excited to talk to you all today. Hi, guys. I'm Asma, and I'm the New Hampshire Chair. And I'm going to be a senior next uh, next school year. Hi, it's nice being here. Oh, I should probably say she, her pronouns. I'm also going to be a senior. Sorry, I forget how to introduce myself every once in a while. Yeah, also she, her are my pronouns. Um, so the first question that I have for you guys is, what do you think was the easiest and, and, or what do you think is the hardest part of working with your state party? You can start if you want, you know. Okay, um, so Maryland um, was in a bit of a tricky situation. Um, so I'll give you guys some context. Um, basically, we like, uh, when HSDA split from Young Dems, we as a state, I guess, never fully did. Um, and then our last chair, who I was on the e-board for, like that's when we actually just split. Um, and a lot of things that lost in communication. Um, there was a lot of bad blood for no reason. Um, Twitter blockings, some Twitter fights, um, all that good stuff. And so basically we were in a situation where like we were two organizations that basically had the same goal, yet we were somehow fighting, um, which was obviously ridiculous. So um, what I really had to do was kind of just level. There were a bunch of emails passed back and forth, some like essay lanes. Um, and eventually I was just like, okay, you know what? We're gonna hop on a Zoom call. We're gonna figure this all out. Cause there was just a lot of like past baggage that didn't really add up, but was miscommunications from calls with Jack and the chair before him. And a lot of stuff that, you know, just didn't need to continue. So what we had to do as a state chapter was say, you know, Maryland, the Maryland Democratic Party heavily recognizes the young Democrats of Maryland, but because we're kind of newer after the split, we're working to get that same recognition. So what that meant is making sure that we are, you know, on the same playing field as these organizations by making sure we're partnering with them. So I actually had to like draft and sign an MOU with our young Dems president, which you probably won't have to do um, unless you were as um, rocky as we were, but um, from that, now we're working to get seats on our Democratic Central Committee. Um, 
I don't even think that answered your question, but I think the hardest part was just working through a lot of stuff that didn't happen while I was in leadership, um, but was still affecting the way I could lead. And also just, you know, getting credibility within adults. And I think it's especially hard in a high school organization, just because the leadership does change almost every year, because you're only in high school for four years. Um, so you do have to get in and establish yourself pretty quick um, to make sure you can get as much done as you can. Um, but they like do want to help. There are a lot of adults who do believe in youth leadership. So definitely just make the ask and the worst they can say is no, and they probably just won't respond if they're going to say no. So that is all. Well, um, our state party, the NHDP, is like, they love us. Like, they always try to recognize us. They um, have a ceremony. Um, Actually, well, yeah, your, your sound went out for a second. Oh, really? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, so um, the state party basically loves us, and uh, the Young Dems and the Democratic Party, they have um, award ceremonies, and they actually recognize us, and they, um, they always reach out to me to try and ask for students who I think are doing exceptional jobs, and they always try to recognize us. Um, the easiest people I work with are honestly the Young Dems. Uh, we have our, I call her our advisor. Uh, her name is Molly Byron, and she literally, she's on our call every week. She helps us uh, with like party things, uh, trying to create events and stuff like that. And we haven't really had many like hardships at, like so far uh everyone welcomed us like with open arms um and whenever we want to collab they're honestly really welcoming welcoming and they also help us like fund our website and stuff like that which is really great we're really grateful for it awesome and then the next question that i have is what were you what were you able to work on with your state party uh in order to uh progress your state chapter um as prescott mentioned in the presentation um the party political directors are really really great resources and um i've been in contact with mine a lot of times and sometimes things work out sometimes doesn't most recently um, we were talking about, you know, allotting a DNC page slot to the high school Dems. Um, and as I mentioned, we're working to get a central committee seat. Um, and just so like high schoolers have a seat at the table in the party. Um, we also, um, to make sure that like we're expanding all throughout Maryland, which ranges a lot from like urban to rural, as a lot of states do actually, um, but to really make sure we're getting into counties that we don't have a lot of membership in, we reached out to individual like county um, committees. And we found that a lot of the chairs have actually been really responsive and willing to pass along names of high schoolers that they think would be interested in that type of thing. And then in turn, um, they pass around our little blurb, our registration form. And so really just using them to network and help out. And as I mentioned, like there are a lot of people who do wanna help and who do really believe like, I'll give you an example. The other day on our Facebook page, we had this woman, I don't even think she lived in Maryland, who commented, who like left us a five out of five review and was like, young people in politics is so great. And it was so cute. And so like, there are people out there who do believe in what we're doing. So yeah. Um, things that we were able to work on. Um, well, first of all, uh, when, it's like campaign season, I guess. And even before, the party gives us lots of free tickets to events um, where we can meet politicians and it's like get free food and everyone just goes. It's really fun. I've been there with Prescott and it's really a good time to meet new people and listen to like speeches. Um, one thing we that's new that we started is an intro Dems table where we talk like bi-weekly um 
about what the college Dems are doing, the young Dems, the party, and the high school Dems. We all talk on Zoom, we um, meet, and we just like update each other and talk about what we should do. Um, we recently also had a Black Lives Matter week of action that we worked on with the young Dems and the college Dems, and we had a virtual vigil, and it was like, it was great because we got each other to like promote it and we got a pretty good turnout. And also we are, we have something from our party called the coordinated campaign and they are helping us have events to phone bank and um, help with voter registration in New Hampshire. So they're really helpful and yeah, that's, some of the things we do we we did with our state party, but also, um, like Lena said, uh, county chairs and like local chairs of. So, for example, Rockingham County Democrats. I got to meet with their chair, and they we talked, and he helped us like network and stuff. And I gave him um, my contact so he can pass it along to high schoolers he meets and it's really helpful to have their support as well. I do want to mention really quickly that state parties are a really great place to get like phone banking links. Um, we use a lot of our parties um, virtual phone banks um, as a lot of like the phone banking we do especially for um, Great. Um, thank you guys. And then um, I have one last question before um, we turn it off to um, questions from the audience. Um, how do you navigate working with the state party during a primary? So I'm going to let Ozma handle this because um, Maryland votes very late. And so the Democratic primary is often not that exciting. Um, for example, we voted, I think, in June, and so Biden was already the presumptive nominee. Um, so I'm going to let First of the Nation handle this. <laughs> so um, our, our state primary is First in the Nation. Uh, you already know. Um, but something I did um, before our primary is try to get in contact with every campaign I could. And I got help from the state party to get their contacts. Like I literally got a whole sheet of all the campaign managers and like everything. And I got to meet with them. And it was honestly like really helpful to know how we can help each campaign. And also uh, we had a state convention before the primary and it was really fun. We got to volunteer, um, aka go behind the scenes and wait for the candidates to come out off the stage. And then we all got to meet them and it was really fun. But yeah, um, we got to, we tried to promote events uh, with high schoolers. And like, uh, for example, in Nashua, Pete Buttigieg went to my friend's house who was the former, um, New Hampshire chair, uh, and we had a meet and greet or Pete and greet, um, and Chaston was there, and he gave a speech, and we all just, that was like one of the first events, and then um, we had many more. There was some with Cory Booker, uh, Elizabeth Warren. I There were so many, I can't even re remember, but yeah. I, yeah, that's it. And our state party like helped us coordinate things like that. Yeah, thank you. Um, so is there any questions that people have about um, the presentation or, or to our panelists? Um, if not, um, I, I know Kate Donahue here um, she is a legend in the HSDA world, um, has been on the Adult Advisory Board and Summit for I, I don't even know how long. I, my first day of 
like national HSDA summit involvement. I met her. Um, and she's going to talk a little bit about um, her perspective and seeing how Massachusetts worked with the, the state democratic committee. Thank you, Preston. Uh, so just wanted to say thanks to everybody. And just in terms of um, managing expectations, I do want to stress that what you see in New Hampshire is very, very different from what most of you will see in your own states. Um, you're not necessarily going to get that kind of access to presidential candidates or that kind of state convention. Um, one of the things that I'm proud of in my time in Massachusetts is um, kind of initiating and then shepherding um, high school students through the process of charter changes and um, rules changes to allow 16 and 17 year olds to fully participate in our state convention and in our caucus process. In Massachusetts, and I know this varies from state to state, in Massachusetts, um, through the changes um, that I worked with students on and with adult members, any 16 or 17 year old, anyone who's 16 or older by the start of our caucus, um, process can take part, fully vote for other delegates, and fully run for delegate themselves to our state convention. And um, so that's something that I would urge all of you to look at within your own chapters. And, um, and generally, um, I'd encourage, you know, I, I agree with everything all the speakers said. Um, the, one of the things that can be really helpful is, you know, just connecting with an adult and saying, hey, just help me find out how I can connect to party events. And just showing up can make a big difference. Uh, when we got the, when we first got 16 and 17 year olds to be able to vote at our caucuses, a young woman from my area wrote wrote up how it went with a progressive team. So you could read about that. Um, so that's sort of the main thing. And don't be afraid to ask for things that can be helpful, but, but be reasonable. Um, as it happened, um, I ended up inviting a young man who had kind of really rebuilt the New Hampshire, the New Hampshire, the Massachusetts chapter. And, I, he came up in my Joe Biden phone bank yesterday. And so I, I called him and said, I'm at Summit. Remember what you were doing five years ago? So he jumped on our mentor call and um, he talked about how um, rather than necessary, well, you need to do both, but instead of as you're growing a chapter, very much what um, the panelists were saying, instead of just reaching out to other teams, put yourself in, um, put yourself in adult situations and just be ready to say, hey, you know, if you know teens, we can, we can get them engaged, make sure people know that your group exists. And so um, unless there are specific questions, um, my, my biggest pitch is work with your state parties to try to get yourself enfranchised within your delegate and convention system, if you have one, not every state does. Um, and also, I, I have one question um, for you. Um, what, what made you support high school Democrats uh, and, and its organizing work? Um, because you, you are the um, archetypal example of, uh, you know, what these, uh, these members here uh, need to change hearts and minds of. Well, I guess um, it, I didn't set, I, I tell people I didn't set out to become a high school gems mentor. I just um, was doing organizing and high school students one way or another, they'd show up a few of them here and there. And um, through an effort of the Massachusetts Democratic Party back in 2008, um, yeah, in 2008, we had a youth convention that year, and I connected with a student, and he did really great work. And um, at a DNC meeting back in, I forget when, I was telling, I ran into a young man, and he said, I'm the head of the high school of America. And I'm saying, I didn't even know there was such a thing. <laughs> and uh, I started telling him about what wonderful work high school students do. And 
I told him about high school students doing great work fundraising. I told him about a story of a um, 15 year old who between her junior, her sophomore and junior years of high school was one of the lead finance people on a congressional race. And uh, I said to her, what did you mostly do? And she says, well, mostly call time and check chasing. And I told that story to people and they're saying, how do 15 year olds even know what call time and check chasing is? And then, um, and then, you know, I, I started, I, this is a little bit of a stereotype thing, but I said to the young woman, I said, well, what's it like being back in high school after spending your summer in such an adult world? And she said, oh, high school boys are so immature, which, um, <laughs> as I said, a little bit of a stereotype there. Um, but anyway, so one thing led to another. And as I said, it wasn't so much that I sent out to mentor high school students. I just set out to get Democrats involved. Sometimes people will say to me, you know, um, talk to me about how to get um, young people engaged. And I say, sure, I'll come to your meeting, but I'm going to talk about all ages. And, um, and that was... So anyway, they invited me to be on the adult advisory board and then to be a mentor at Summit. And somehow I, I tell people that after my first summit, you guys are lucky in some ways. I know it's not the same. But after my first summit, they invited me back. Um, physicians will sometimes say to you, listen to your body. When I got that first invitation back, my body screamed, no, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> but my heart said yes, and I went back. I'm not sure if that answered your question, but it, my involvement basically came from making sure that people who wanted to engage had the opportunities, and I saw that more barriers were being put in front of high school students than others, so I ended up engaging that way. Great. Thank you so much, Kate. Um, I, I really appreciate it. Um, is there, if there's any last questions um, from anyone, I'm more than happy to answer them or our wonderful panelists. Um, how, how long is this panel scheduled to go for? Um, it's supposed to go until three, but I, I think people deserve, you know, if we end up cutting short, we people can take a break, <laughs> drink yeah. more water, drink more water. I would just, um, I guess I would just say, um, if, is there anyone here who, even if you don't have a question for the panelists, I'd ask, does anyone have a success story about what's, um, what you've done that's worked well, or anybody have a challenge they want to talk about? Um, hi. Um, sorry. Hello? Hello? Can you guys hear me? Sorry, you can go. Um, my question is, so... Um, last year, before I like started my entire chapter uh, thing, it's I reached out to my local Democratic Party, in which I was trying to start a community chapter and I wanted their support, and they told me to just start one at my school. So, um, flash forward like a uh, two months or so, I'm at my I'm in like my principal's office, so I'm sitting there. I've been sitting here for like two hours, just convincing her to let me have it, and she still says no because there is no Republican counterpart to it. I go to like a really, really liberal school. So I knew that was not gonna happen. Um, I just wanna know, what did it, was it a good idea? Like, should I kept fighting for the club or should I have just done what I did and incorporate it as a democracy club, letting both Democrat and Republican um, join the club and just keep more contact with my Democratic Party? I, don't I can know. answer that if anyone needs or okay yeah um i mean i i think a lot of the times when it comes to like starting high school democrats chapters like we'll see where um like schools will want to have um a republican counterpart but at least in my example there was students who like we gave them the option of starting it and then they just never did because like let's face it like republicans aren't interested in grassroots organizing um so like it's it's i mean like whatever you needed to do in order to get people like civically engaged inside of your high school um but like the thing is it's just like 
teenage Republicans, high school Republicans just don't really care slash is a thing. All right, thank you. Thomas, you wanted I, to say something? I, can I oh, just, yeah, I was... I was just going to follow up on the other question and say, you know, do what works for you, but um, you can also form a community chapter, and even if they kind of coexist, even if your democracy chapter at your high school um, is a, a parallel structure in the rest of the world as your um, as a community-based HSDA chapter. That way you have the best of both worlds. All right, Honestly. thank you. Yeah, so I was just going to say, uh, Kate, you were wondering about success stories. So I just wanted to share this one story that I, um, that I, that I thought was really cool. Well, in, like you were saying, Kate, um, state committee wanted to vote to not have the high school Democrats who are 16 and 17 not be able to be old enough to be a delegate at the state convention. So um, we as an e-board, we called or emailed all of the state committee members and asked them to rule in favor of letting us continue to be delegates. And um, with that, it, it made a difference because I, I remember um, the, the ruling to, to continue allowing us to, to be delegates was by a narrow margin. And um, so I really think that shows the importance of keeping in contact with your state party because your voice um, can have a difference even if you don't have seats on the committee. So. I'll, I'll just echo what Thomas said. Um, I don't have to go into chapter and verse of how this all evolved, but in 2019 was the first year and um, we worked with very closely with students. I mentored them, literally the mentoring process, but um, we got for the first time 16 and 17 year olds to be able to take part in the caucuses. I kind of crossed it off my list and said done. And then to my surprise, with no announcement or no notification, as we were going into the 2020 um, convention, they say, oh, we're going back to the old way because this year we nominate people instead of just voting on issues. And so we really think they need to be eligible to vote. And like saying, where the hell did this happen? So I started a, I shouldn't say, well, I did start, but I went directly to last year's chapter chair and said, this is what I think you need to do to keep this. And I guarantee you, if I and the other students hadn't interceded, it would have just been rubber stamped what came from the administration. But because of, um, because of the actions of students, we retained the right for 16 and 17 year olds to, to vote. Yeah, definitely. I, it, take, it takes a lot of effort um, and Massachusetts High School Democrats uh, and its awesome supporters have always been killing the game when it comes to working with their, their state committees. Um, if there's, there's nothing else, um, there's 15 minutes until the next uh, round of presentations. Um, and thank you all for, for being here today. I really uh, appreciate getting to talk with you and the rest of the panelists um, about what you guys can do in order to, to work with your state parties. All right. Take care, y'all. Drink water. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Prescott. Thank Bye, you everyone. So